Welcome back to the sandwich series. I hope you guys are all staying safe in quarantine if you are in quarantine. And I hope you're cooking a bunch, which I certainly have been cooking and really connecting to my home cooking practice. But I told you in the last episode that my wife was very pregnant. Well, we had our baby and she's safe and she's amazing and precious, but the content goes on because I gotta keep you inspired because you know we have time on our hands and I wanna keep the recipes flowing. So today in the sandwich series, we're exploring a sandwich that I had never heard of before, which is the Welsh rarebit sandwich, which is just a cheese sandwich. And I grew up on a cheese sandwich called the grilled cheese sandwich. So I wanted to explore this sandwich and make it from scratch and see how it holds up against the grilled cheese sandwich. But first I wanted to get a real life sampling of this sandwich because it's so much better to actually taste it in person from someone who knows what they're doing before you go out and make this thing from just an internet recipe. So before quarantine happened and we could go out to restaurants and we could interact with people. I actually took a little field trip in the city to one of the only places that I found in New York City that actually makes this sandwich. So I'm headed out to a place called Tea and Sympathy right now in the West Village. It's an English place, one of the only places that serves Welsh rarebit. And I've never tried this sandwich. I've heard of it, I've seen it but I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know how to make it. So I'm gonna get on the subway, head off to the West Village and sample this thing in person. Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and the Queen. Hola, baby. Hola. Delicioso. So are you the owner? Yeah. Okay, and what's your name? Nikki. Nikki. See the gray hair? Restaurant business, baby. Whoa. <laughs> and how long have you been in the restaurant when, business? Oh, in the restaurant business? Yeah. 44 years. Here in New York or? Always in New York. Always. Worked okay. in some of the best places with a dream of my own. With the idea of bringing uh, England. Are Americans telling me that English food's terrible. Yeah. No, no, no. What do you have right now? Three places? Three places. Okay. Okay, we have the original Tea and Sympathy. Next door to that, we have Carry On Tea and Sympathy, which is the shop. Okay. And then we opened this fish and chip shop about four years after that. Okay. Because everyone kept asking me about fish and chips. Tell me a little bit about the sandwich we're going to make. Okay, this is Welsh rarebit. Okay. Right? This is very classic, very English. When I was a kid, this is what we had every day. Like a grilled this, cheese here. Same. It's a bit like a gr yeah. grilled cheese here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the basic. But what's great about this is you can't go wrong. You could put beer, you could put Worcester sauce, you could put onions, whatever you want. We make it quite basic. Right? And we serve it on very good bread. So basically, this bread today is amazing. Okay. And it'll, it might be good tomorrow for toasting, but that's as far as it goes. So fresh. Fresh bread. Okay. Right, so we've got cheese. Okay. Queso. It's an English cheddar and it's quite strong. I think they call it sharp. Sharp, here. yeah. Right, I'm just going to put a little pepper okay. in here. I don't put salt. Cheese is quite... Salty. It's quite salty. Yeah. So I put a little bit of pepper. I do it first so I can see how much is in there. I quite like a lot of pepper in mine. Mustard, we use Dijon mustard. You can use any kind of mustard. It's really all about your palate. So I'm gonna put a nice dollop in, right? Cause I quite like it mustardy. I'm gonna add a little heavy cream okay. to make it nice and moist and mushy and spreadable. See, it doesn't take a lot. Yeah. It doesn't look great. It looks like pastry in the making, see? Yeah. Here. Ah. Now, okay. don't put the egg white, okay? Just the yellow. It just gives it a nice bit of color. This is the mixture. This is the mixture. That's looking good. Right? And then we're spreading. Yeah. But then what we're going to do now is ah. we put it straight in the oven. Okay. And then it toasts the underneath yeah. and the top. So you get that crunch on the top, the crunch on the bottom, and just a slight softness. Oh. We wait. We wait. How long? Few minutes. Few minutes. When it's done, I'm going to show you how we serve it next door. You know who Squeeze, all right? Who? Squeeze. No. Tempted by the fruit of yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Glenn is a very good friend of mine. Okay. We lived together in a little bed sit okay. in, in England when okay. I was 17. And this is what we ate every day because we didn't have any money. Well, he's got a song. Yeah. Called the Welsh Rabbit song. Really? 
Oh, it's the recipe. That smells so good. Oh. So you do serve it with sliced tomato like this song. I'm oh, guessing you'd really like nice. to eat this now. I would love to. I haven't eaten anything. Oh, it does smell amazing, yeah. I've got to say. You can have some too. Can I? Yeah. This looks amazing. It's a little more um, refined than the grilled cheese. Don't we're should... English, we do refined. You're right. Mm. Well, thank you. This was delicious. Now I got to go make it fresh. With love. With love. What's great about this sandwich is that it's just two main elements. You've got bread and cheese, which is very beneficial for my life right now, considering I have a baby that's four days old. So the idea of making a sandwich completely from scratch, that's like five elements, like a typical sandwich series episode, just seems a bit insane right now, but that doesn't mean we're not going in on this bread and really perfecting it, which is perfect for quarantine right now, because I know a lot of you are looking for more bread skills and more bread recipes. And what I'm gonna do is call upon my ultimate bread baking handbook. So I'm gonna be using this for reference. And if we scroll through, there we go. There's the white bread recipe that I've used in other sandwich series episodes that works out great. Let's make some delicious bread. All right, so what I have right here is one cup of water. And then I'm just gonna hit the two cup mark with milk. So we've got one cup of water, one cup of milk. Now I'm gonna throw that in the microwave just to heat it up for one minute. All right, nice and warm. So I've got my yeast packet here. This is active dry yeast, and this stuff is really powerful. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little over half of the packet. I don't think we need it all for this bread loaf. That's probably around two teaspoons of yeast. And then we'll just give that a quick little mix to incorporate it, and we'll let that activate for about 15 minutes. Now, who would ever thought we would have a flour shortage in the world? It's insane. And on one hand, it sucks because a lot of people can't make bread. But on the other hand, I'm like, wow, so many people are making bread, which is amazing. And I do think that everything's going to level out eventually. And I think it will be better for the flour industry because you're starting to see more smaller brands that would go directly to a bakery. Now they're going direct to consumer. So I think big things are coming for the flour industry and there's gonna be much better flour coming your way. And for me, I'm kind of going in between both worlds. I've got a mainstream all-purpose flour, one of the bigger brands, and then I have some fresh milled bread flour from a smaller local mill around me. So I'm gonna use about three cups of each of those. But for you, just use anything that you have. This isn't about having the perfect flour, it's about making bread, and it's quarantine, and just use whatever you can find in the store or whatever you have in your pantry. All right, yeast is fully active. Little bubbly on top, make sure you see that. You can smell a little bit of that yeast aroma. We are going to just pour in. Oh yeah, we're gonna definitely need more flour, I can already tell. Now just a few other ingredients. Three tablespoons of maple syrup. You can use any sweetener, but most you know sandwich loaves do have that extra sweetness, which I like. Of course, we need our salt for flavor. It's about a tablespoon. Now what I'm gonna do is mix this up and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of butter. You can also use oil, but that's just gonna help with the fluffiness, with the moistness, and really make a delicious bread. But let's first see what our dough's looking like. All right, dough rested. I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup of butter. I didn't mean for this to be melted. I would do room temp, but the microwave zapped it up. So those are all of our ingredients. I'm just gonna knead in this butter and then we'll start the actual kneading process. our dough going in the bowl. That will probably prove for two hours. We'll see, but we want it to double in size. 
I wanna take a quick break from the Welsh Rare bit to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of creative classes. For all of you out there, anyone who's curious, who wants to learn something new, Skillshare is the perfect place to do that. And there's never been a better time to learn something new because a lot of us have time on our hands right now and life doesn't always give us time like this and you gotta take advantage of it when you have it. So I want you coming out of quarantine with so many more skills. So what I'm learning from Skillshare right now is how to up my lighting game and my videos to really increase the production value so you guys have a more enjoyable experience because as a YouTuber, you start from the bottom. Pretty much everyone starts from the bottom when it comes to production. And for me, I was filming on iPhones in my first videos. Like if you go back 10 years, it was pretty bad. And then over the years, I just started learning one thing at a time, learning about cameras, learning about audio, and lighting was something that I never dove into. I felt like I never had the time or maybe I just wasn't interested, but I've been realizing how important lighting is and there are some amazing lighting courses on Skillshare. So the two that I've taken so far that have really helped, one is called the Introduction to Lighting for Videography by Jordi Van Put, and the other is called Lighting for Video, Simple Techniques for YouTubers, Online Courses and Interviews by Dennis Schrader. Now these courses are great because they're simple. They're not too long, but they're packed with information and I'm learning a ton. Right Right now I've got this new light that I'm trying to really nail down. And it's the reason why I'm wearing my hat backwards right now because I'm getting some harsh shadows and lighting is all about shadows. So right now Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership for the first 1,000 people who click the link below in the description box. And then after that, it's only $10 a month. And I'm telling you, learning new skills, getting education on your own like this, it's so valuable. It gives you more control of your life. And this is a great example. In a situation like this, I'm really happy to understand, you know, the basics of production. So make sure you check out that offer. Now back to the video. So it's been two hours. Let's see what we got here. Woo! Looking very nice and pillowy and doubly for sure. Doubly. All right. So let's form a loaf. So what you're gonna need to form a nice bread loaf is something like this. This is an actual Pullman loaf pan. You can just use a bread pan like this, or you don't get a perfect sandwich loaf and you just put it on a baking tray and that's totally fine as well. Oh, look at that fermentation bubble. Always like to see things like that. Beautiful. Let's just roll this out real quick and we'll throw it in there. First step. Spray this thing down, very important. You don't want your bread sticking to your pan. Let's get just a little bit of flour on the board. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just spread this out into as even of a rectangle as I can get. Kind of flatten it out just a bit. I'm not deflating it, but I'm pushing it down because it will rise again. And now we're just gonna start tucking. And you want it like a nice tight loaf. You can roll, pull that edge so it's even. All right, loaf rolled. I'm just gonna spray this down. You can use oil just to keep it moist and you don't even have to cover it if it's moist. So I'm just gonna let this sit at room temperature for a bit and we'll see how this proofs. I can always throw it in the fridge to slow down the fermentation if I'm not ready to bake it, which is great about bread. You can always bake around your schedule. Oh, we got a bit of an issue there, a little deflation, but that should be all right. Been in the fridge for say five hours and it rose a lot as you can see it's almost overproofing here which is a little scary it's starting to deflate but i'm going to get this in the oven i preheated the oven at 350 and i'll just give it a quick egg wash first all right open up the oven throw that sucker in there and see what happens all right let's check this out What? Whoa, check that thing out. Beautiful. So this thing is nice and hearty, uh, but fluffy at the same time. And of course I'm gonna let it cool, but I'm very excited to slice into this sandwich loaf. We got sandwich bread. 
All right, so when it comes to this cheese sauce that goes on the Welsh rare bit, if you look it up online, 90% of the time you're gonna find some type of bechamel sauce. You know, the cheese sauce where you add flour and butter and make a roux, then add the cheese, that whole process, you get a nice creamy cheese sauce. Well, that's what you generally see, and that's what I would have definitely made if I didn't go to Nikki's place and see her make a completely different version. And I like that. I wanna keep this sandwich much more realistic, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make our own cheese spread for for this Welsh rare bit. All right, so here is my little cheese pan. I have, I know this is cheddar, Vermont cheddar. Someone ate another cheddar in the house that I was saving for this, so that's gone. Actually, I think this is the last piece of the cheddar that was eaten by someone in the family, not me. Next time I'll label it. So I'm just gonna do a blend of these three cheeses and we'll start there. Right, here's my cheese blend. I'm gonna take most of this, pop that in a bowl, and just reserve some for the grilled cheese later, which is the only ingredient for the grilled cheese sandwich. But for the Welsh rare bit, we gotta add a few more things. So here are all the ingredients that Nikki mentioned right here. No salt, like she said, the cheese is salty enough. The only thing I do wanna add that she actually mentioned as well that she didn't add to her sandwich is a little bit of beer. And this is an IPA that I made right before I went into quarantine. So I have a bunch of them. So I'm just gonna give it a kick of that real quick. All right, so I don't know if it was the beer, but I think it's just a little too wet. And her consistency was so spot on as like a spread. So I'm gonna have to tap into my grilled cheese share over here and just add a little bit of that because we need to get that perfect spreadable consistency. All right, there you go, nailed it. That is just spreadable and perfect right there. Let's make a Welsh rare bit. So I've got the oven preheated to 450. I'm gonna throw this in there and we'll get it all melty. And then I think I'll throw on the broil setting just to get it crispy on top. because That's super important for this sandwich. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare some toppings for both this sandwich and the grilled cheese. I really like the tomato that Nikki served on the sandwich, so that's definitely going on there. So I'll slice up some tomatoes. And then the other element, which is a personal favorite for me, are caramelized onions. Now, I don't think this is traditional at all on the Welsh rare bit, but I really love them on the grilled cheese. And I wanna keep it consistent for both sandwiches. So what I did was I took a pan. On low heat, I added some oil and some butter, and then I added all of my sliced onions and a good amount of salt to start pulling out that moisture. And I cook them low and slow. And at first, you're really just pulling out all of the moisture in the onions. And then once the moisture is gone, you can start to really develop the flavors from those natural sugars in the onions over time. It took me about an hour or so on low heat to get a nice jammy onion goodness that I was happy with. All right, let's see what we got. Whoa. Looks delicious. My only complaint is that I didn't get the crispiness that Nikki had at her restaurant. I don't know if it was the parchment paper. We put it straight in the oven. But I definitely have to work on that. But first, let's give it a taste. Oh my God. You know, this is one of those sandwiches that doesn't look like much when you see it, but when you taste it, it's just perfection in your mouth. Wow. I'm liking this more and more as I taste it. I mean, it's creamy, it's flavorful with all those extra ingredients. It's easy to make. Those toppings are perfect. You can customize them however you want. I love this thing. This is amazing. I definitely need to work on my crispy levels. Gotta get them up. Always looking to increase crispy levels whenever possible. But overall, really happy with it. And it's funny, I haven't had a grilled cheese sandwich in a while. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna whip up a grilled cheese sandwich and see how it compares. Look, my grilled 
trees has wings. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn good as well. Definitely better texture. Easier to control the texture in a pan, which I like about the grilled cheese sandwich. You know, it's cool eating these sandwiches back to back. I feel like with the Welsh rare bit, just all of those little extra ingredients working together creates a pop when you taste it and it really hits you right away. Compared to the grilled cheese is just a little more smooth all the way through. Um, texture's a little more rounded and I definitely taste that difference there eating those back to back. Just a little more wow factor with the Welsh rare bit. Better texture with the grilled cheese sandwich. So I think they both have their pros and cons. They're both amazing and they're both unique. They both have their own style. That's it, there you go. The Welsh rare bit sandwich was delicious. Better than the grilled cheese, Honestly, they're different, but for me, I like trying new cultural foods and that was brand new for me. So it's just a fun experience. And also it's an easy one to make. Of course you can make the bread from scratch or you don't have to make it. Uh, but hopefully you try this one out when you're hanging out in quarantine and make sure you follow me at Life by Mike G for all behind the scenes action of the sandwich series. And make sure you stay tuned for more homemade action coming your way in the next video.